in the year 2004 I started spouting statements that many people just furrowed their brows and didn't know what I meant and the statement was the future is mobile and in 2004 of course people had mobile phones but what they didn't realize was that people were going to leave their computers behind and start using uh, stuff like iPhone and uh, Samsung Galaxy and using tablets and being able to get most of their job done or their daily email checks and messaging and uh, look on Facebook, their social networking and uh, so on, getting the job done with the mobile. And so people were saying the, the future is mobile. I was saying the future is mobile. What I also meant, and that took, I started this in 2004, it only really started to take off in about uh, 2012, 2014 was when uh, people started uh, going e-commerce and uh, selling online and people starting to do a lot of things uh, using uh, the internet to connect for their profession, the cloud, Dropbox and all of this kind of stuff. Mm. And so, in the first stage of this mobile era, people were doing their social and communications, but still having problems with productivity. And so, uh, first of all, mobile was for fun, and then productivity started to come. Productivity means that uh, if you need to write up a document in Microsoft Office, or in uh, Pages if you're on Apple, or in Notes, or whatever, that... Uh, you use Dropbox to send the note to Dropbox and then you can open Dropbox on a different mobile device and access the file. But in truth, you know, it's like saying, oh, if you want to cut your hair, instead of going straight to the barbers, first of all, you have to go to buy some scissors and then take the scissors to the barber. Uh, and so that makes it three steps which makes it, of course, a bit of a hassle. But because of the excitement, everybody was trying to go mobile and giving it a chance. So everybody installs their Dropbox, and instead of just transferring the file straight from your phone to your computer, people were trying to leave the computer, so you're trying to transfer it from your phone to the other device and share it with your friends. and. You have to download all of these extra apps and open them in other apps and then send it to somebody in a different app and you're in a labyrinth, you know, it should all be just within one interface. Like on a desktop, it's much easier and you don't have to do all of that kind of thing. And so as time has passed, people have stopped using Dropbox and these things, people are starting to give up it hasn't really worked that people are using the cloud to collaborate and keep their files online. People want their files on their hard drive. They don't want to have their movie in the cloud. They want it on their hard drive because if your Google movies, the server breaks or Google ceases to exist or Apple ceases to exist, I own about $15,000 worth of movies and TV series in the Apple marketplace and I guarantee you I've downloaded every single one of them to my hard drive just in case the internet disappears you know if it disappeared if Apple just went broke well I'd have fifteen thousand dollars of digital media lost and so people want it on their hard drive anyway and uh, the mobile era as it is today is still very useful for those who want to check their Facebook, check their mail, have a quick message with somebody, uh, and for the consumer. So basically, it's not the end of the mobile era for that kind of basic consumer who click and buy, he can buy things online, and all this kind of stuff. And so uh, you could say maybe it's not the end of the mobile era for that kind of use and consumer, but... For the webmaster, the content creator, the movie editor, the uh, music maker, in truth, there never was a mobile era yet. 
uh, for example I use an e-commerce software which uh, I open up on a desktop in a browser and I edit online I can write up the things I sell I can add image galleries and insert images and insert videos and write my articles and add the weights the shipping costs add extra parameters like if you would I sell amulets so if you would like the amulet to have a case if you would like a necklace with it and I do all of that on a desktop and uh, the e-commerce solution has made an app which I use iOS, I use iPhone, so it's made an app, they made one for Android too, which only does half of the stuff the one for the Apple version does. Um, and they have a thing in the app called a, to add a product, but it just doesn't work, you know, half of the tools are missing and then it crashes, or if you switch apps to copy and paste something from another, from a browser, you want to copy a link to somewhere and add it into your my product write-up, by the time I switch apps back to the product editor, it refreshes and everything's gone. It just loses all of the info and have to start from the beginning with a mobile. So it doesn't even remember. You can't switch apps without it forgetting where you are and deleting whatever you hadn't saved. It just put me back on the desktop. And so since I think it was in... Uh, 2013 that I started trying to use my iPhone or my iPad I had a Galaxy Tab and I had some other various mobile devices and I kept trying different approaches to try and get the job done without stuttering without having to use some kind of workaround or get frustrated and the truth is it's now 2017 and since 2013, I've been trying to use mobile devices to write up a product and a blog post in my store and my websites, add images, add all of the different parameters and attributes and uh, keywords and whatever, and I just can't do it. I haven't managed to finish a single product write-up using the mobile device, and they've been developing the app for about four or five years now, and we're still not there. So I decided to give up and I'm going back to desktop. Which luckily now, you know, we have these things like there's the Samsung Galaxy Book and the Microsoft Surface Pro. I like to speak of the Galaxy Book because although it's not very powerful, it's the same size and slimness as an iPad. And it has a, a, a keyboard cover, like an iPad cover, very thin. But it has a trackpad on it, a mouse pad. And it's full blown Windows 10 operating system and it's the size of an iPad and so I would say you know for content creators it is not the mobile era yet or the mobile era is dead because no serious content creator who needs productivity can work on a mobile operating system you can just about do it with great difficulty and frustration and lots of workarounds but what's the point when you've got something the size of an iPad like the Galaxy Book with full Windows 10 and mouse and cursor and trackpad, you can have full-blown Photoshop, full-blown Premiere Pro. Uh, you can't have iMovie, which is from Apple, so you'd have to. I would have to change the software I use. But I would say the only thing that's mobile about productivity uh, uh, professionals. Is something is that the desktop OS is coming to smaller mobile portable devices, but that the mobile operating system is never going to fulfill the needs of content creators and professionals, except for specific jobs. Like an artist can use the Apple Pencil in Procreate, a fantastic app to create really, really great art. Yeah that there are some professions with which the mobile is already very very useful for creating great art but I think in the end you, you would still end up even having to export it and then finish it off in Photoshop or whatever in your software on your desktop and for me I say well I want to start and finish in the same workflow I don't want to start something in the kitchen and then have to take it to the living room and then have to transport it to the storeroom and then send it to China and back before I can take it into the bedroom. 
I just want to pick it up, take it in the house and put it in the room I want it in. Yeah? And when I start writing an article, I don't want to start in notes on my iPhone and then throw it to my iPad so I can type it easier on a bigger screen and then when I finished it send it to my computer and change the format so that other people can read it on a Windows device I don't want to do that not if I can do it all on one device so um, the other reason the, the end of the mobile era not for the content creator but for the consumer who I said still has a use for it is because well, let's say a friend of mine today, he just wrote me a message saying his favorite app, which is a paid app, it's about 20 or $30 to buy, has just uh, stopped being, oh, it's just changed. It was a free app, and then when he updated it, it became a paid app. He's already done lots of work in it, and now they want money for it. So he paid it, I think, and now... I think they changed to a subscription. Or for example, no, I think he just they changed to paid app and so he resents it. Many of the apps I use, I had a great app on the iPad Pro, uh, iPad that was called Blogpad Pro and it allowed me to connect to all Blogger and WordPress blogs which I have and post to them remotely from within one single app. It was great. But they stopped um, support and updating it in 2014, and it's now becoming deprecated and unusable. And so the other thing is you pay for apps in the App Store, and the developer just gets fed up of having to support it and keep updating it because uh, iOS or Android will keep updating their system every few months, and every time they update, the apps break and the developer has to uh, redesign his app and adapt it so that it keeps working with the new updated operating si mobile OS operating system and it's never ending and so the developers and the people who made these apps to actually just want to put it in the marketplace in the app store and let people buy it and just sit on the beach I'm, I'm sure they dream of sitting on the beach and just going home and reaping the money from their hard work of making the app but they get fed up of it because every two or three months they have to go back and refulfill the requirements for apple update the app answer all of the feedback and i don't know you know and some of these guys are just one guy developers his own app and uploaded it he can't keep forever supporting the app and keep updating it to keep up with the changes in the operating system you want to put your product on the shelf and sell it and just go home you know and so the developers are getting fed up of this constant never-ending sisyphus work you know the myth of sisyphus he carries a ball on his back up the hill and when he gets to the top the ball falls off and rolls back down the hill and he has to start all over again and so the developers keep having to start all over again with something that should be able to say the work is done, all I need to do is reap the benefits. See, I write ebooks, and once it's a digital download, my work is writing it. Once I've written it and I put it online for download in my store, the work is done. It's delivered automatically. Don't have to send it in the post. And so when a person buys it, I'm reaping the rewards from my hard work, what I did already, but I don't have to keep taking care of it like you have to clip your toenails all the time. And so with mobile, you have to keep clipping the toenails of your apps all the time. Uh, the developer has to keep clipping, the tone, clipping his toenails and cutting his hair and shaving his face by updating the app to keep it functional and supporting. And uh, the end user, the the customer and the consumer has to keep clipping his own toenails endlessly by updating the app and when you update the app then the operating system wants an update and when you update the operating system then the app stops working and then you have to wait for the developer to update the app so that it will work again and so on and it's like tennis it's like table tennis ping pong you know update this now that doesn't work but then they update that so it works again but then this doesn't work and you're just going round in a merry-go-round on mobile apps update every few days or months or weeks and if you're on a desktop os windows or mac 
maybe every year or two years or three years or even five years you'll get a new Windows or a new OS X version but you don't have to keep updating four or five times a month with this pop-up when you're just taking a photo of your friend with your iPhone all of a sudden you can't take the photo or the video you're taking stops because a pop-up comes up saying there is a new version of iOS would you like to update now and you press no and then it says, are you sure? Or do you want me to remind you later? Or to do it automatically when you're not looking? And there is no button that says, no, fuck off. I don't want to update at all because I'm sick of this. And I'd like to stop these pop-ups from hassling me to update to something that I'm never going to update to because I've had enough. But you can't do that. So you always have to keep pressing this remind me later and so on because they keep hassling you to update for your benefit because it's a security update or actually it isn't it's got some more spyware in so they can uh, mine more of your data or because they've got a big mistake in it that they want to cover up before they're embarrassed but usually these updates do nothing except break the apps which haven't uh, updated themselves for your new operating system so because of apps disappearing and apps ceasing to be supported or apps suddenly becoming more expensive or just being removed. I bought two games from Square Enix called Chaos Rings and Chaos Rings 2. They cost me $20 each. Bought them for my son. If you go to the App Store in Apple now and look for Chaos Rings and Chaos Rings 2 they're not there, they've been removed. But they haven't paid me my $40 back. And what about the other million sales they made? Because I'm sure they sold at least a million of those, that game. It's a very, very famous game, like Final Fantasy or something. Huh? So what happens? You pay $20 for a game, and then it stops working on iOS. It doesn't work even if you have the app on your computer and you can try to load it on your iPhone, it won't work. It broke and so they removed it, but they didn't pay everybody back. Yeah, so there's another example of why mobile is bullshit. You know, you can pay $40 for an app and then the owner of the app decides to just remove it. You try and sue them. First of all, if they're not in your country, you're screwed. You'll have to hire a lawyer in their country. And, you know, I've hired a few lawyers in the past couple of years, and every time I've hired a lawyer, the first thing they said to me was, give me ten to 15,000 American dollars. Yeah, and two months later, after they'd wrote a little bit down, they would send me another bill saying, we need another $10,000. And so if you have stolen a $20 app from the app store that you paid for, and you want to sue the owner, I hope you've got fifteen to thirty thousand dollars just to get it into court first. And one thing your lawyer will tell you is that there is no guarantee that the judge will fine the other person and make them pay you back what your lawyer cost you. And so to save twenty dollars you're gonna have to invest thirty thousand dollars. You gonna do that? No. So you have no protection. If you write to Apple you won't even get an answer. I did and I didn't, okay? So that's why you cannot trust the App Store. And I assume Google Play is the same, and the Windows Store is non-existent anyway. The only apps you've got in there are really rubbish. That's the only thing about the Windows, is the App Store is rubbish. But luckily, people still download from the internet what they want. You can still get real full-blown apps, which you don't have to download through the stupid App Store, which isn't working. It's just becoming a marketplace where dodgy developers with tricky-dicky ideas put their rubbish apps there to deceive people and make money. And so I, I consider the App Store supposed to be a place, a safe place to get safe apps, but it's actually a place where people are finding sneaky ways to do dodgy things and just not value, no money for value for money apps. That's the other thing. So the App Store has not become what it was dreamed to be. The support and the, the danger of the app disappearing after you've paid for it, which they often do, or stop being supported, and they nearly always do at some point, except for the biggest, well, even the biggest companies like Square Enix, they remove two $20 apps 
and so that is why the mobile era is gonna die I don't mean people are gonna stop using mobile devices people will be using portable mobile devices but they are going to lose trust in the app store they're gonna lose trust in in that because the apps they buy will end up deprecated and they'll say oh I bought this Photoshop in the year 2000 on my Windows on my desktop computer I mean I've got Photoshop CS4 or something on my Mac I mean that must be from 2010 or something it's still working fine and it doesn't f tell me to update I never get an update telling me to update it's now 2017 so I've been using it for seven years it still works fine I don't need to update it does all the jobs I need it to do and so uh, you know what do I need some measly little puny stunted half functional app for which I'm gonna have to finish on my desktop anyway I give up I use my phone for messaging I won't use it to look at Facebook so I don't do that but uh, I understand people will use their mobile phone to scroll down the news feed spying on what other people's doing I don't do that I'm not interested in other people's lives my own life is completely fascinating I really don't want to spy on what somebody else has been doing in the garden with their dog I really don't care and so um, anyway the end of the mobile era here the end of the mobile era before it even really began and uh the second mobile era for me for content creators at least if not consumers I think consumers will keep using it but they will lose faith in paid apps because of losing their money so many times there's no guarantee they'll lose faith in constant updates but they'll keep using it for consuming garbage what well, icons well consuming their own fun content In my opinion it's all garbage but anyway I'm not entitled to tell other people that I'm sure other people love some of the stuff I consider to be garbage so and then they probably consider what I look at to be garbage too so anyway that's just personal taste but for definitely the only thing that's gonna be mobile in future is not the operating system you look at the Galaxy Book 10 inch or 12 inch it's full Windows 10 operational with trackpad and cursor fully fledged and it's the size of an iPad or an iPad Pro and it's just as slim yeah and it's a fully fledged desktop operating system Hewlett Packard brought out a, a telephone a couple of years ago when Windows first began their first attempt at the Windows continuum which is where you plug in your phone and you can already get uh, you plug your phone into an external display with a keyboard and mouse and you can already then get uh, some basic kind of desktop like functionality browser and outlook and so on 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 your on a big screen but it wasn't really full desktop but at least it gave you the mouse and uh, it gave you a bit more control which I need and it's the reason I can't use mobile for my professional use but it wasn't there yet but it, it was a perfect example of how you could have uh, a desktop slash mobile OS fitted into uh, an iPhone 7 sized device and that you could use easy jobs for mobile jobs on the phone itself but that when you wanted to use it use uh, desktop functionality you just plug it into an external screen through a dock with an external wireless keyboard and mouse and that you actually don't need a big desktop computer all you need is a screen keyboard and mouse when you come home you plug in your phone device and there you go you've got an external screen it's exactly what you would do with the galaxy book it's a 10 or 12 inch screen you can work on it outside full laptop type uh, desktop type operating system but tiny like an iPad and that's mobile that's the future of mobile yeah, full desktop OS in a highly portable mobile device and if it's very small like an iPhone it'd be possible to just plug it in when you get home and so your computer 
what we now need a big box like a Mac Mini or a Mac Pro to put in a big box with fans and stuff uh, in the end they will get the desktop OS so tiny and so cooled that you can fit it inside something the size of a phone and so what would be the point of a mobile OS if you've got that hmm? there'd be no point yeah, mobile is only good for some little gimmicky playing a little bit of message and stuff and even that more difficult and so the second phase of the mobile era is that desktop style operating system is going to make the mobile type operating system deprecated I mean iOS is going closer and closer towards a desktop OS and OS X the desktop version of Apple's uh, Apple computing is trying to develop to make itself a bit more similar to the mobile OS and so oh let's take the desktop OS and make it look like a mobile one that's cool and let's take the mobile OS and make it look a bit more like desktop what desktop ones you know it's like having two pieces of jelly that you're moving closer to each other and at some point they will meet and become one jelly and so what will you call it then desktop OS or mobile OS or single OS or fusion OS but either way for an operating system to survive in the mobile uh, environment it has to be as powerful as a desktop and there's a problem with touchscreen how to make touchscreen as powerful as a desktop with all your gestures and swipes and stuff and I personally believe that how developers are thinking they're not thinking out of the box and that's what's limiting them and they're screwing up a lot of desktop functionality by trying to add mobile functionality to things that people aren't going to use in mobile I mean, if you want me to click on a pop-up gallery that has arrows to the left or right of each picture to view the images left or right, you know, like in Facebook, when you click on an image, you can click left or right, and then just click outside the image to close the window, doesn't work anymore. You have to go right up to the top right corner of the screen where there's a tiny little X, and you have to tap on that. You used to be able to just tap outside of the photo on the screen, and the, and the image would close in Facebook. Now they've tamed it back to 1998 style, mouse and cursor style, little X in the top right corner of the screen to close the window, close the image. And you notice that in Facebook galleries, which is ridiculous, that's really old school. It should be intuitive, just tap outside of the photo anywhere from the screen and it will close. So they don't even know what they're doing. They keep changing how they're trying to interface on the mobile and try this and try that. When they try this, then the other thing doesn't work. So when they fix that, then the other thing doesn't work. And either way, it's not going to work. It's not going to work like that. And so um, as far as I'm concerned, I can't get my job done with mobile. I could sit and chat all day. I can't even share something to Facebook. I don't add Facebook into my mobile. So when I want to share something, I don't use share buttons on websites share this to Facebook. Most definitely not. I copy the URL from the address bar at the top. And then I go to Facebook myself, to my profile, and then I paste the link into a new post on my Facebook profile and save it. Don't use share buttons. I'm not letting anybody track me. And I'm not giving other companies and people who make those share buttons the opportunity to gather my data for free. You want my data, you pay for it. Or you're going to have to work hard to get it because I'm going to block you in every way I can. I call it, that's personal data theft. And it should be illegal, it isn't. But maybe it will be one day. So I don't do that. It makes my job very hard. Mobile is designed to spy on you the mobile OS whether Apple spies on you for their own purposes but they don't share it with other people so they keep your privacy except for their own spying they don't keep your privacy for you they keep your privacy for them and they use it for their own purposes which is how you get served ads and when you go to iTunes store 
you will see recommended content. That recommended content comes because they're spying on you. But they don't share it with Google and they don't share it with Amazon and they don't share it with other people, that's all, as far as we know. And they believe that because you can see the FBI have been trying to get them to unlock an iPhone of a certain terrorist for a long time and they can't. But Google do. And all of mobile uh, service providers do, such as Verizon in the States, at least not anywhere else, but in the States they do. They've just made a law, Trump made a law that says all of these mobile uh, service providers and internet service providers have to hand over your data if it is requested by the IRS or the NSA, the government. Everything all of your private so everything they have collected on you and so whether google will hand it over and google also will hand it over because they work with the government on that and facebook too in certain extent they do also hand over stuff and uh something that all of these entities deny but which i have seen proved for myself is the fact that uh, your stuff in one app is not private because another app or another company gets to see it. Fine example being I used iMessage, which is built in Apple software, the, the, the messaging software, to talk with a friend who was also using the same messaging software, which Apple does not share with anything outside of Apple. And I told him that when I was a little boy, I went to St. Peter's School in York, in England, in iMessage. The next day, I opened YouTube. I don't know if it was in a browser or the app, I can't remember. I think it was on my desktop. It was on my desktop even, on a different device, but logged into YouTube. And the first recommended content I saw on the first page you might like was a video for St. Peter's School in York which I just happened to tell my friend earlier that day or the day before that I used to go to that school in a private message that was nothing to do with Google. It was an Apple app. So how did Google YouTube know that I had said to my friend the day before that I had been to St. Peter's School in York and then find content to display to me adverts and videos of St. Peter's School in York. Sometime later I uploaded a, a song, a, a musical, an instrumental piece I had made on my iPad and uploaded it to my SoundCloud account and I shared it to Facebook. Now the name of the song was Three Bars of Gold. Uh, it was a mini album of three songs I made and I called the album Three Bars of Gold. And I shared it to Facebook with the title of the song of the album for about three months and even now actually which is about two years later I go to Facebook and I see ads for gold bullion gold bars and so me sharing a song called three bars of gold to Facebook causes people who are selling gold bullion to pay for ads to Facebook so that Facebook can show an ad for gold bullion to me who isn't interested in gold bullion but who happens to have made a song that's called three bars of gold and so they think some an, an artist, a content creator who makes a musical composition called Three Bars of Gold is interested in gold bullion. And they're charging advertisers of who sell gold bullion to pay for ads, to show ads like for gold bullion to people like me who aren't interested in it. That's their AI, their artificial intelligence advertising bot. And that's what the kind of money you'll be paying to advertise shoes to people who wrote the song my old shoe yeah but who doesn't want any shoes you know that's how intelligent their artificial intelligence is yeah uh, so that's another thing you know the, the scam of the advertising scam but that's not this podcast this one is a a babble about the mobile era and the end or the the fact it never really began for content creators and so dodgy apps, apps disappearing, free apps becoming paid apps, apps disappearing from the app store, uh, a reason to not support it or not believe in it or not waste your money and time on it.
and the fact that updates come every second day on the old mobile but that on a desktop you get long periods of time without having to bother about it the higher power of desktop the fiddly workarounds of mobile and the fact that desktop operating system is now being fitted into portable size mobile size devices I would say that the crappy puny stunted spying thing we call apps and mobile OS is really dead it's just something that's promoted by data miners advertising freaks and trenders who just follow the trend blindly and think oh yeah I've heard it's a mobile era everybody wants apps let's design an app and so on I, I think disenchantment is beginning and we'll see what happens I think the Galaxy Book Windows 10 and the Surface Pro are already proving that we don't need a mobile OS we just need to get desktop OS shrunk down into a portable device and think of some more radical approaches like plugging your phone into an external ski screen or being able to switch between mobile and desktop operating system within the same device which we've already seen on some tablets which were Android and Windows and when you remove the keyboard it was Android and when you put the keyboard back on it was Windows but that's another workaround and switch chop and change which I don't like I want everything integrated fully powered desktop style operating system in a mobile touchscreen device that has mouse and cursor functionality so it looks like I'm going to change from iOS Apple devices to go for a Galaxy Book or a Surface Pro and see what the next years bring but I've had it with mobile they can take their mobile and they can stick it right up their development portal anyway I'm going back to my desktop now because I'm using a mobile thing to record this on an app that's still useful to me and get the rest of my job done on a desktop end of rant Ajahn Spencer signing off <laughs>